Okay, so is this stuff right here sixth grade math? Well, not exactly. Okay, this is uh, a little bit uh, advanced for sixth grade mathematics, uh, but some uh, sixth graders or, or people or students at this age level could be studying this if they're like in some sort of accelerated or gifted program. You certainly can learn this, but the point of this video is I'm going to introduce this concept of functions. Okay. And I'm going to explain it as, as if I would introduce the concept to a sixth grader. So if you're in sixth grade and you're like, hmm, what's this? Uh, well, stick around. You're going to learn something because this is right around the corner for you. Okay. After sixth grade, you're going to be uh, getting closer to taking your first algebra class, pre-algebra class. But maybe you're 60 years old and you're like, well, hey, if a sixth grader can learn this, you know, or he's going to explain this for a sixth grader, then I could definitely understand it. Listen, it doesn't make a difference who's watching this video. You can understand this. And again, the topic is functions, all right? And how I'd introduce this, how I'd explain this to a sixth grader. And I love functions. Uh, you know, I love the word here because look at that. That root word says fun. So functions must be fun. And they absolutely are. Okay, they give me a big happy face here. I'm like, yeah, functions are awesome. And some of you are like, oh boy, this guy needs to get a life because, you know, he thinks math is that fun. Well, listen, if I'm not excited about the concept, how am I going to possibly get you to be excited about learning mathematics, right? So anyways, so stick around. We're going to learn about functions, just an introduction to the concept, all right? Now, before we get into this, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. So uh, I basically have 100 plus different uh, math courses. So all the big courses, pre-algebra, algebra 2, geometry, algebra 1, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. So uh, a lot of people are doing independent study like homeschoolers take my full-on uh, courses, but I have many, many specialty test preparation courses. So if you're studying for the GED or the GMAT or a teacher certification exam or a uh, college placement exam, uh, I have specialty courses there. So if you're studying for a particular type of test, check out my course catalog. I probably have your test there. Or if you're taking algebra and you're just struggling and you need some different instruction, you definitely want to check out my program. Okay, it's been very, very successful over the years. So it is there for you. Now, if you are a math student, I kind of assume that you are, you need to know the golden rule of math, and that is the following. And uh, I've developed this rule over decades of teaching this subject, and it goes like this. Those students who have the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take math notes take sloppy math notes or maybe take notes every other Thursday Okay. And they're like, well, you know, I'll take notes here and there. Well, that's not going to cut it. Okay. And you can't have your best friend take your notes for you and then take their notes the night before the test. That's not going to work either because the mechanics, the work, and this is where I think gets a lot of students because you actually have to work. Yes, you have to work at learning. All right. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but yeah, you do. Okay. <laughs> but the work, the actual, uh, all, you're using all your senses, your writing, your listening, your seeing, you know, all that engagement. This work in creating notes is how you're going to increase your retention and comprehension in mathematics. So if you're not doing this, this process, you're not creating those circuits, you know, in your brain to learn. So this is critical. There's no substitute about it. It's not even optional. Okay, you got to do the work. So improve if you need to improve. And probably most of you out there have room for improvement. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's go ahead and learn a little bit about functions. And of course, uh, this will be like at the sixth grade math level. But I'm going to introduce the concept uh, to you. Uh, so you can be like, all right, I understand enough about this. So when, you know, you do face something like this, it'd be like, oh, all right, I can understand the big picture. And it's always good to start with the big picture in mind. Okay. So what is a function? Well, functions are extremely, extremely, okay. I'm emphasizing that <laughs> extremely important in mathematics, algebra, advanced mathematics, you hear this word all the time, quadratic functions, rational functions, exponential functions. They're using this uh, this word, and this word means something, all right? It has precise meaning. But what we want to do is just kind of get a 
basic understanding of what a function is. So you can see here, I have a function is equal to a role. That's basically what it is. There's a lot of different ways I can get, uh, explain or define a function. There's a lot of technical ways I can come about this. So if you know a lot about functions already, you're like, well, no, it's a function is this, a function is that. Yes, I get that. I can you know, go off in many different directions on uh, the definition of function. Uh, but what I want to do is make this easy to understand. Clear and understandable math, that's my goal all the time. All right, so just think of a function as a math rule. It's a rule, okay? Now, what are rules of rule? Well, in this case, for a function, it's going to be like this. We're going to give, uh, we're going to take some input numbers, all right? So I'll be like, hey, give me a number, right? Uh, give me a number, and when I take that number, I'm going to apply a certain rule to it, and then I'm going to give you an output number. Okay, so this output number is going to be generated by taking this input number, using this rule, and then creating an output output number. All right, this little process here of taking an input number, plugging it into a rule, and then uh, basically creating an output number is this concept of a function. This is the process of what functions do. So let's take a look at a basic example here, okay? Because this rule part might be a little confusing, but let's do something specific here, all right? So here is my math rule, my function rule. And it's gonna go like this. Uh, we're gonna take our input number, whatever you tell me the input number is, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna multiply it by three, and then I'm gonna add one, okay? So this is my rule. I'm just making up any rule. You can use, you can, you could say two times input number, subtract seven, whatever you want to do, but it's a rule, okay? So when we're given an input number, what we're going to do is we're going to take that input number, multiply by three, and then add one. And after uh, using this rule, we will then have an associated output number, okay? That's going to be related to that input number. So every input number will have a unique specific output number, okay? So let's go ahead and do an example, and let's uh, use two as our first number, our first input number. So let's go ahead and figure out the output number. I can't figure out the output number yet because I gotta run it, this input number into my little function rule. Okay, so three times the input number will be three times two. Okay, I could write that this way, three times two. Then I'm gonna add one. So I'll add one. Okay, so let's just make sure I did this right. Three times the input number. Okay, that's two. So three times the input number, that's two. Then add one. So three times uh, two plus one. Uh, looks like that will be six plus one. And that is right. So that is seven. Okay, so six plus one, that's seven. So my input number uh, was two and my output number was seven. All right, so for this particular function, okay, a function is a specific math rule, okay? It's a very specific math rule, and you can have any infinite, any kind of infinite number of different type of rules uh, that you want. Okay, so let's make a little table here, and we'll say, uh, we'll say for this particular function, um, I plugged in two, and I got an output of seven. Okay, so let's have you try a problem. Let me erase this. And let's say our input number now is five. So what do you think the output number is going to be? All right, so if you want to pause the video, I'm going to give that a try. Let's go ahead and figure it out now. Okay, so it's three times the input number, so that's going to be three times five. And then I'm going to add one. Okay, so it looks like that's three times five. That's 15 plus one. So that will be 16. Okay, so... Let's put this in our little table here. So five, and then I had an output of 16. Okay, so uh, what you're seeing here, all right, is basically a function. Now, there's some uh, specific things that we need to kind of emphasize about a function, and that is the following, okay? Every input number, every input value only when we have a function, okay, and in mathematics, okay, every input number has only one unique output number, okay? So, for example, all right, so here, this two, all right, I got a seven. So let's say I said, hmm, finish this table up and let's do this value of two again, all right? And I plugged it back into this 
rule, I couldn't get like uh, 13, okay? Because two, when I plugged it into the rule, only gave me seven. And two will, will only produce that one unique number, all right? So another way to think about a function is the following, okay? Here we have, it, generally it's like a function machine. It's another good little model here. Let's say this is a machine and uh, we throw in input values into our function machine. And I'll use this little, our function machine will still represent our rule. And then we're gonna get output values, okay? So our input value uh, for this uh, particular um, rule, okay, let's say I plug it into two, all right, as yeah, an input, and I'm gonna get a seven as an output. All right, no problem, okay? And then let's say I plugged in a five, all right, threw it into this machine. Yeah, the rule did what it was gonna do, and out came a 16, no problem. So here's the thing. So when I plugged in a two, I got a seven. So let's say I had like a whole bunch of numbers over here, and I had like two, three, five, ooh, here's another two. So when I plugged in this two, I got a seven. I plugged in a five, I got a 16. And I'm like, hey, I got another two over here. Let's throw it into the machine and see what happens. I can't throw in the two again and then end up with another number like 13, all right? That is not a function. Now that can exist in mathematics. That's called a relation. That's a different type, uh, different topic. And functions are certain types of relations, just to kind of give you a little bit of, you know, expand your knowledge here. But functions, very, very specifically, um, whatever your input number uh, is, okay, each input number will only have one unique, exactly one unique output value. So if you understand that much, then you are like really learning a lot about functions. Now, let's use a little bit of algebra here to help us out, okay? So instead of using input number and output number, let's kind of do this. You know, our input number could be anything that we want, right? So let's just call this some variable x. Now, if you haven't studied algebra, when I write a little x like that, that just means some number, okay? Any number that you want, we'll call it our input number. So what do I do? If this is any number, well, I'm gonna multiply that number, okay, this is input number, by three and add one. So let's just put this x right there, okay? So three times this x plus one. This is really my rule, my function rule, right? And uh, the way I can write this a little bit nicer in algebra is this way, three x plus one. And this is my output, all right? output. I don't have to have these parentheses when I'm doing multiplication. So my output uh, is uh, in, in algebra. We use this variable y, but we have this other notation, and uh, it looks like this, this f of x, right? So f of x is the same thing as y. So I could write this whole rule as the following, all right? Let me just erase this this rule that we're talking about, this function rule, as f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. This x is my input, okay? And wherever I see an x, I'm gonna plug in my input value, all right? And then when I do all my rule, this is my rule. When I apply my rule, I get some sort of output value, and that is y, okay? So it turns out that my input values are associated with this variable x, and my output values are associated with this variable y, okay? Now, I'm kind of getting a little bit more advanced on you here, but let's uh, let's do two again, right? Well, how would I do this in function, more advanced function notation? Well, it would be f of two. Two is my input, okay? So I'm gonna replace the x with a two, and I get, a, of course, seven, all right? So seven is my y. So when x is two, y is seven. And that uh, associates with a point on a graph to seven. Now you may not even learn that yet, and I wanna kinda of stop myself at this point, but I wanna show you where the algebraic notation, all this little crazy stuff, just means the same thing as kind of a written rule, okay? But we use variables to make our life easier, okay? That's what uh, algebra is. We use these little X's and these little crazy notations just to uh, explain what's going on so we don't have to write rules out 
you know, using, you know, input value, this and that. Because you think about that, it's too long uh, to write out. Now, one other thing about functions is the following. All of our input numbers, whatever we can input into our rule, all those numbers, all those set of numbers, okay, how, you know, how many uh, input numbers we have. And sometimes you can have a whole bunch. Sometimes you can have an infinite amount of numbers. This is called the domain. Okay, that's a little fancy word for you. And then all the associated output numbers is called the range. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap it up right there. Let's just kind of review quickly what we learned. What is a function? A function is nothing more than a math rule. Okay, such that when you plug in an input number, this rule is going to get applied to it and it, uh, and the output number is going to pop out. Okay, but what's the, the like main thing here? Well, each input number has only one unique output number. Okay, and uh, an input number can't have two uh, or more output numbers. Okay, and the set of input numbers is called the domain and the output numbers, the respective uh, output numbers is called the range, and we can use this function notation using variables and other type of notation to kind of, uh, you know, express our rule in a more algebraic manner. If you understand this, okay, and you're like, okay, I'm pretty comfortable with all that, then you're well on your way uh, of learning functions, okay? So, again, remember, functions are fun, all right? Hopefully, you got a big happy face. You're like, oh, no, I thought that was going to be scary, but this is pretty cool, and, uh, you know, I get this. I can do it. You absolutely can do it. So whether you're 60 years old or you're in sixth grade, it doesn't make a difference. Everyone can learn math, but how do you learn math? Well, one, you got to find yourself a teacher that you like and understand, and two, you got to take math notes, and three, you got to be committed to the process. It's, you know, you got to build up your knowledge and don't quit. Consistency over time and you'll do well. Okay, so if you like this video in some way, please consider smashing that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like me who's obsessed with teaching mathematics. Um, if you go on to my channel, you'll find various playlists, basic to advanced math. Uh, all those videos are there for you. But of course, if you want my best help, uh, check out those uh, links in the description of this video. All right, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.